everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to crochet the cozy one hour cowl. This is made with fluffy, beautiful yarn and a large hook, so you can really work this up in no time flat. This is perfect if you need something extra cozy or you need to come up with a gift very quickly. The finished cow measures about 14 inches tall and about 32 inches uh, in circumference. We're gonna be making this in the round and working from the bottom up. And this seriously takes no more than an hour to make. Um, and you can make it a little shorter if you want to, but I wanted to make mine extra generously sized and cozy for the season. And it just has a really soft touch and just a lot of loftiness and uh, it's very cuddly to wear. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a tapestry needle, a pair of scissors. We're gonna be using a 10 millimeter crochet hook. Now as a side note, depending on the manufacturer, they may call this an N or a P hook. This one happens to be an N slash P. I wouldn't worry so much about the lettering because it changes from manufacturer to manufacturer, but just look for the 10 millimeter crochet hook. Now for our yarn, we're gonna be using some super bulky yarn. And you can really use any super bulky yarn you like. I'm gonna be using 156 yards of super bulky yarn. I'm gonna be using a yarn called Chill by Sugarbush. And each one of these is 52 yards, but you need a total of about 156 yards. And this is, let's see, over here, um, I'm using, uh, this is called Lazuli, that's color 1022 in case you're wondering. This is really soft, it's kind of like roving and um, has a nice feel to it. But really you can use any super bulky yarn you like. So let's get started. Okay, so let's take the label off of our yarn and we're gonna get started with our starting chain first. So find the end of your yarn. And then what we're gonna do is put a slip knot on our hook. So to make a slip knot, you wanna create a tail, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up the loop and tighten. So our particular cow has a starting chain of 60. Now, if you want to make your cow a little bit narrower or very, very wide, you can change that starting chain number. Um, it is a multiple of three plus four. So just know when you're making your starting chain, you can do um, three plus three plus three plus three plus three and so forth until you get the circumference that you need and then add four more chains onto the end of that. Okay, so let's get started with our starting chain. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of yarn here. Okay. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifty six, fifty seven, fifty eight, fifty nine, and sixty. So now what we're going to do is create the uh, circumference of the cow. So right now we have our starting chain. And I wanted to mention as a side note, if your chain is a little tight, just go up a hook size for the starting chain only, then you can bump back down to the 10 millimeter for the rest of your project. So what we're gonna do is join with a slip knot in the farthest chain from the hook. So the chain all the way back here where we started. But before you do that, what I like to do is kind of run my hand over the chain and make sure nothing is all twisted up because sometimes it can get a little twisty while you're working. So we're just going to straighten it all out. Now, in that last chain, the chain farthest from our hook, insert the hook into that chain, wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop. You'll have two loops on your hook. Bring that loop through the loop already on your hook, okay? Now this tail we can worry about later, or you can hold it along the edge and weave it in as you go. I'm gonna kind of hold it out of the way for now so we can see. So then what we're gonna do for row one is to chain four. So that chain will count as a both a double crochet and a chain one. It's gonna create the first part of the V, of our first V. So one, two, whoops, three, and Four, okay, 
Then in that first chain, we're going to work a double crochet. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into that chain, bring up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. So this is gonna be our first V. So those first three chains are accounting as a double crochet. Then we have a chain in the middle, which will create the top part of our V, and then that double crochet. So that's the first V of our row. Okay, next what we're gonna do is skip two chains. So skip two chains, one, two, and in the next chain, we're gonna work another V. So to make a V, uh, work a double crochet into that chain, just like that. And then what we're gonna do is chain one, and then in that same chain, work another double crochet, okay? Just like that. So now we have our next V of our row, or round rather. Okay, so we're just gonna do this all the way around. So skip the next two chains, work a V in the next chain. So each V is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And we're basically just gonna do this all the way around. Skip the next two chains, work your next V. Now, true to its name, the one hour cow, um, we already have quite a bit of height on this. So you can see that just one round is gonna give you a ton of height. And we have a large circumference, so it's gonna be very large and comfy and cozy. Skip two chains in the next chain, work your next V. So double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. Skip the next two chains, work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the next chain to create your V. Just like that. Skip the next two chains in the next chain after that, work your next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Okay, so we're just gonna keep doing this all the way around. Skip two chains and then work a V in the chain after that. We're just gonna go all the way around. Okay, a little bit more yarn. So, as you can see too, we're just about halfway around. So this is such a quick little project. Okay, so skip the next two chains and the chain after that, work the next V. <clears throat> skip the next two chains and the chain after that, work a V. And remember every V is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Okay, skip the next two chains, work a V in the next chain after that. Skip the next two chains, work a V in the chain after that. <clears throat> Okay, hey, moving right along, skip the next two chains, work a V in the chain after that. Once you get the sequence established, you can of course skip one ahead to round two if you like, but if you wanna kinda of crochet along with me, that's totally awesome as well. Work a V in the next chain after you've skipped two. You can see how quickly with this super bulky yarn that we go through it as well. Skip the next two chains, work a V in the chain after that. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip the next two chains, work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip the next two chains, work a V in the chain after that. 
double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then you'll have just a chain left. If in your counting you have an extra, that's totally fine too. But you're going to count three chains up. Remember that chain four at the beginning? The first three chains was a double crochet and then another chain made the middle of the V. Count three chains up and join with a slip stitch. So insert the hook into that third chain up, bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook. And round one is complete. So you can see it has a nice circumference. It's very plushy. Okay, so for round two, round two is actually easier than round one because we're not counting any chains or skipping anything. What we're going to simply do is chain four. One, two, three, four. Now again, this counts as a double crochet plus chain one because we're going to locate that first V, which is right here. See that first V of our round? And we're going to work just one double crochet into the center of that V. In the written pattern, I call that the chain one space because when we make a chain, it creates a little space in the center of that V. <clears throat> so next, we're going to hop over to the next V, which is right here, and we're going to work into the center of that V and work a V into the V, okay? So work a double crochet, whoops, chain one, double crochet. Hop one over to the next V and just do the same thing. And as you can see, just working into those spaces like that is super fast and very easy to locate where you're supposed to be working. Work a V into the next V. So the V's are going to create kind of like a stacking effect and build into one another. Work a V into the next V that you come to double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and you can see already that they're kind of stacking on top of one another. Hop over to the next V, work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, this is where I think that the cow really, you start to develop a lot of momentum with your cow. The very first round, of course, we're counting and we're skipping and we're really trying to be careful to kind of establish that good foundation of our V's. But now you can really just work into those V's and you don't have to look for anything special. You can just locate the next V and work double crochet, chain one, double crochet, I always find that round two and beyond goes lightning fast for this pattern. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. <clears throat> Next V, double crochet, chain one, get a little bit more yarn, and double crochet. Next V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. <clears throat> Next V, we are so close to the end of this round. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And as you can see, it only took a few minutes to complete one round. And also I wanted to point out that we're just on round two and we already have a couple inches of height. So I love these bulky projects. They're so warm in the winter. They make wonderful gifts and you can really just zip through a couple of them. Even in one sitting, you just pop in a movie and just get a few done. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And just look, we're just almost at the end there. Just a few V's left. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. <clears throat> now some of you who are super duper fast at crochet might be able, even able to do this under an hour. But I think an hour is a good estimate. Okay, last V, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And now we're at the beginning. So once again, like we did before, we're going to close the round by counting one, two, three chains up, insert the hook into that third chain up, 
bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on our hook, okay? Now, to continue, you can kind of see where we're at here. To continue, we are just gonna be repeating round two over and over and over for the rest of our project. So if you need to see round two again to kind of get started with the round, just back up the video a little bit and you can see this all over again until you're ready to kind of depart and work on it from memory. Now, I'm gonna continue with row two over and over and over, and when I get to the top of my cow, we'll rejoin and I'll show you how to finish everything off and we're gonna weave in these ends next. So stay tuned for that. Okay, I'm just working that very last V of the round. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then we're gonna do the same thing we've done and count one, two, three chains up, join with a slip stitch to close the round. So as you can see, my cowl has grown quite a bit. It is a wonderful size. It's nice and tall and wide and super cozy. So to finish up, all we're gonna do is grab our scissors and snip the yarn. And then when you fasten off, just wrap it around your hook and pull it through all the way. Now this is the when I'm gonna um, make the right side, the side that's been out the whole time we've been working on it. So what you wanna do, you can see the V's look a tiny bit different on the inside. Turn your cowl inside out, because we're gonna weave the ends in now. So grab a tapestry needle, and make sure you grab one that's large enough to um, accommodate this very large strand of yarn we have here. And then just thread your tapestry needle. And then what you're gonna do is just go in those back loops here of our piece. Go, go a ways down. Pull through, and then I like to come back in the other direction just to kind of lock that tail in a little bit nicer. Okay, and then just come back in the other direction. Take your scissors and you can go ahead and snip that tail. Anywhere else where you may have tails, go ahead and weave those in. Now, as you can see here, where I joined a new ball of yarn, and on this side where I joined a new ball of yarn, see, I remember at the beginning I had three balls of yarn, so you can see one ball of yarn, two balls of yarn, three balls of yarn. They weren't very large uh, yardage-wise to begin with, but because of their bulk, um, there wasn't much on there. So if you need to, sometimes it can unravel, you can give it a fresh cut and then trim the rest of your ends, or weave the rest of your ends in rather. So just take that tail, same thing, just go in one direction, come back in the other. Now this yarn's pretty fluffy, so it's kind of staying put when I weave the ends in, okay? And then you just do the same thing and trim that off. And then you'll just repeat for all the other ends that you have on your cowl. Okay, so our cow is complete and it looks absolutely beautiful and ready to wear. So that is how you crochet the cozy one hour cow. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.